Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Killian Riano. I'm the Associate Director at Kent State University's uh, Cleveland Urban Design Collaborative, where I also teach urban design and architecture. Um, so the CUDC has been in Cleveland for 20 years, uh, working with communities uh, mm -hmm. uh, in different aspects. Um, uh, we have worked in Warren. I personally have been going to Warren. Um, uh, I moved to Northeast Ohio about uh, less than a year ago. And, and before that, though, for five years, I've had interactions with TMP and Warren generally, uh, where I was bring, when I was bringing students from New York City to work on different projects and things, and it has been incredible. Uh, the CUDC has been doing projects in the area in Youngstown and Warren for 20 years, uh, although it's mostly focused in, 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 in Cleveland. Uh, the, a lot of community design work. Lately, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, one of the biggest projects we have right now is a, uh, a program, a design build program that, that works with young people, mostly black and brown young people, uh, on design build projects and has a, and the idea is to create uh, educational pipelines uh, for those that may want to join architectural engineering or other kinds of uh, fields such as those. Um, uh, I just taught a studio looking at Warren and Lordstown, uh, the economic uh, uh, impact of the closure of the Lordstown plan and potential alter alternatives. And, and, I, and, and similarly, we also are doing a professional project with YSU, uh, looking, at how, uh, looking at Warren and Norristown uh, through a federal grant and some potential uh, new employment opportunities, priorities. Also, TMP actually was the first group he contacted and made a map out of the, 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 your priorities. And um, one of the things I've always been impressed by is the, this project, the Build a Better Warren is a very exciting project. I wanted to chat with you guys. So then let me share with you why, why so I, that's a little bit about the CUDC and myself, and then a little bit about this project. This, uh, this project is called American Roundtable. Uh, it was a competitive uh, proposal project uh, uh, process uh, from the Architectural League in New York City, uh, where they uh, asked people to propose uh, reports in communities uh, were, uh, with a population of 400,000 or less people. Uh, and to talk about it, uh, the, the audience for this report, uh, so we were chosen, we were one out of uh, 10. Uh, there's one in West Virginia, one in Maine. Uh, there are some in the West Coast, a lot of uh, two or three in reservations and working specifically with indigenous uh, communities in South Dakota and New Mexico. Uh, and um, uh, and we so there's ten, but a, like a little bit of 150 people applied for it. So it was kind of it's a nice cohort of of young people of architects, etc. Uh, the audience is mostly architects. The Architectural League is an organization that, but architects, landscape architects, urban design professionals, uh, and also government officials that are working within all these. We, uh, they were asking us to look at five items, uh, health, public space, actually today uh, the woman that's doing the public space section is going to be in Warren at the, at the, at the farmer's market. Um, work and economy, um, uh, environment and infrastructure. So, and, and we propose to do an overall lens on uh, work, uh, and work, the, the lens that we're looking at work here, because it's easy to look at Warren Lordstown and there's a narrative about this and whenever people mean work, they mean talking about bringing another gigantic uh, uh, factory to the area. We were more interested in other kinds of ideas around work and I think I actually the Build a Better Warren program from what I have heard fits well. We wanna hear about identity and work, how people identify with their work and we want to hear about young people and work. How, what are what are some of the opportunities and some of the issues that people are seeing in the area, uh, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and also, the final thing I'll add as a personal interest is that the other person that is working on this section so far, we might add one more, Jennifer Roller from the Wien Foundation. Uh, but for, so far, we have Roy Messing from the Ohio Employee Ownership Center. Uh, at Kent State University, a group that works with people to create employee-owned cooperatives uh, throughout the state. Uh, and we're working with him also on a project in Cleveland around these issues. So is that, do you guys have any questions? No, I don't. Yeah. 
I'm very excited to be chatting with you guys. Uh, again, I think that this is a great project and I'm very happy to be able to chat with you and, and hopefully talk about it and amplify it in any way that I can. I, it's not a huge audience, but you know, it is to get let people know, out there know about the great work you guys have been doing. Uh, so, so with that, I wonder if the first question is if you guys could describe the Build a Better Warren project. Um, so I can, I can give a, a brief overview of it and then uh, Gary is one of our senior most BABW members so uh, maybe he could give you a little bit more of an in-depth description of like what his um, normal day, what his routine seems like. Um, so BABW was launched, um, I believe it's in year three now, uh, as a program between uh, Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership and the Trumbull County Land Bank uh, that seeks to create job opportunities focusing around community development activities and uh, do so by employing uh, particularly low to moderate income people from uh, the Mahoning Valley, uh, especially local residents. Uh, so the focuses of the BABW program largely surround uh, vacant land maintenance and projects. Um, so it's divided into four main categories. Um, so uh, TMP uh, has been contracted to run the Trumbull County Land Bank since 2014. Um, through the collaboration, the organizations have torn down uh, close to a thousand properties. And uh, because of that, there's a lot of vacant land and um, still some houses that we use for projects. So a lot of the BABW projects focus around uh, vacant land maintenance, um, grass cutting, board ups, uh, typical tasks associated with owning and maintaining vacant property. Um, vacant land projects where they will do um, greening projects. Uh, a lot of focus is to stop dumping and to um, just make a more visually appealing piece of property out of a post demolition lot. Uh, so fence installations, trees, uh, small gardens, raised beds, etc. Uh, deconstruction. Prior to the demolition of houses that are owned uh, by the land bank, we'll go through and see if there are any materials that could be pulled and used for further projects. Uh, doors, windows, um, architectural salvage materials, tools, etc. And then finally, renovation, which is what the larger focus of building a better warren is going, it seems like it's going to be. Um, so the, the big funding program, um, we are towards the tail end of it that, that pays for the demolition of houses through Trumbull County. Uh, so that doesn't mean that the demand for community development, um, either housing renovation or demolition focused, uh, will disappear though. So now we are trying to see when we have properties that if you rated them on a scale of A to F and gave them a C rating, um, how could we make those affordable home ownership opportunities for the most of, uh, in the most affordable yet attractive way possible? Um, we want to try to explore and learn how we can do that. Uh, so it kills two birds with one stone. It creates affordable home ownership opportunities and it uh, rids our community of vacant houses, which we do have a surplus of. Um, so yeah, the four things, vacant land maintenance, vacant land projects, renovation, deconstruction. So Gary has been on our crew for a few years now. So I, I think he would be a good person to tell you what his nine to five looks like because it, it does change throughout the year as well. And it, it changes day by day. I mean, really the BABW crew never has two identical days of work. It's really different. So Gary, do you want to tell yeah. us a little bit about no problem. So I'm um, like, yeah, basically in the summertime, we spent a lot of time cutting uh, lots. We have quite a few. So we spent a lot of time cutting grass, weed whacking. Uh, sometimes like last year, we had a lot of fencing projects that we put up, like if a, a house was torn out on a lot somewhere. And uh, I'm not sure if it's either when someone buys it or if it's just until someone buys it, we throw up like a nice little split rail or a vinyl fence just to kind of make it look nice. Sometimes we even plant trees and stuff on a lot. But uh, yeah, typically if, if we're not doing that, we kind of have like he mentioned about the renovations coming up we uh, spend some time doing uh, property cleanouts that we uh, go and remove small things that maybe like a, the bigger stuff being contracted out they'll just have us come in and like maybe remove trash or you know small things like that that 
regular are capable of doing. But uh, yeah, typically this job has definitely uh, shown me a lot of things and I've learned a lot. Like I never had a, had a job where I was actually outside before. All my jobs previous to this, I was like behind a desk or worked like fast food or something like that. So this was definitely <clears throat> first time actually like kind of doing construction things and landscaping, things like that, learning how to like, you know, uh, pretty much uh, like meet with the public because a lot of times we're out and about, people come outside and ask us questions and are uh, often curious in the land if they want to purchase it or if we have any information on when a house is going to be torn down or renovations and things like that. So basically the job keeps us embedded in the community. We're always meeting and talking with people and, you know, trying to come up with better ideas to keep things looking good. So. Hey, Gary, can I ask you about then that, that kind of experience? How, how do you... How do you feel about the transition from having these other jobs that were more indoor and that were sounds a lot like in the service industry versus construction? If you wouldn't just mind describing that transition and how you feel and also a little bit about the education because it sounds like a, a, the job itself is, is set up to be to teach you some of the skills as you go along. And by now I'm sure you have them all, but that you, you built them over time. Yeah, so like, yeah, basically, man, uh, the the hardest thing to get used to at first was heat, because I'm always used to have been like standing behind a desk with AC. But I mean, the transition was actually nice because I'm a guy that's hyper, got a lot of energy. So like to actually have a job where I'm out and about hammering things, breaking things, stacking things, nailing things, you know, just constantly moving and uh, learning trades. Like you had mentioned, like a lot of the things like putting in a fence, it sounds simple, but I actually had to learn how to like use an auger properly, like empty holes out with rocks and stuff and use spud bars and so a lot of the techniques uh, we actually learn on the job because there's a, quite a few guys here that are already seasoned, have had jobs like that similar. So they're able to like show us as we go. And uh, but I, I like it, man. This job, I've been here, like you said, a couple of years and I, you know, couldn't be happier. There's always something that I'm uh, taking on of this new task. And I live here in the city. So like a lot of the renovation and landscape and stuff like that is stuff that I'm driving past daily and seeing it. <clears throat> Do you find that young people, uh, it sounds, you said that you go around and that you see a lot of, uh, you're in constant touch with a lot of people in the community. So I'm wondering if, if you're finding that young people in the community are interested in participating and being part of the Build a Better Warren, uh, how, how are you seeing interest in this kind of work? I, I think um, once people get more of an idea of what we actually do, BABW, because a lot of people don't know that part of the program exists. They just hear Trauma County Land Bank and assume it's either something to do with housing or cutting grass. But uh, surprisingly, yeah, there's quite a few people out in the, in the area that are uh, trying to get more information and are uh, interested in what they could do to take part in the community. And I'm pretty sure if they had the opportunity, they would more than likely be happy to join along with BABW because a lot of people live in these areas that we are and they want to see things change and, and contribute if they're able. Can I, uh, can I add something in there? Um, so the, the COVID crisis has uh, given us a new challenge. Uh, so uh, Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership has a branch uh, or a program that focuses on community involvement and uh, seeks to serve as a liaison between TMP and the community, which is the Warrant Enriched program. Uh, so that program focuses on doing neighborhood cleanups and volunteer activities that will bring out um, residents from uh, Warren. It'll bring out students from YSU um, or Kent State Trumbull or any other nearby universities. Um, separate organizations, churches, volunteer groups, and it will put them to work for a day doing volunteer activities that focus on neighborhood cleanups. Um, but with the COVID crisis, we have not been able to do any of those this year. Um, so we are exploring and discussing how maybe we could use the Building a Better Warren program to fill in some of those gaps, but it's not something that we necessarily have established at this point in time. But uh, so, sorry, I just wanted to tell you I'll about it. A little bit with this, and one of the things that I, I was very kind of interested at by is when I when the first time we met, and uh, and I think Matt was describing a little bit that there are actually uh, a lot of jobs in in uh, Warren uh, for construction but not enough people with the skills to fill them. Uh, so if you guys wouldn't mind talking a little bit about Build a Better Warren as part of TMP, an in-house structure to build these skills. And then he also mentioned that in the future, he hopes that some folks go out and create their own businesses and they, and they continue to do this in the private sector. And if necessary, they'll do a new cohort or work with those groups. Or, so a little bit of the, so number one is, is 
uh, why is there such a hard time filling those jobs in ground construction work and uh, um, what else could be done to, to provide those skills? And the number two is, uh, what are the ambitions, the goals of the, the team members of, of Build a Better World? Uh, wanna, wanna go first, Gary, or want me to go? Uh, I mean, as far as the construction thing, I mean, it would, it would just appear that there's not enough people in the area that are actually willing to go and get the trade or willing to work that, those hours and take that job on. You know, because I remember before when they were trying to bring something here before, like a pipeline a few years back, they were saying that this area didn't have enough people to fill in the, the work order. So they would actually have to bring in a lot of people from the outside area. And so, I mean, with that, that's one thing I could say about that. Now, as far as the job, um, as far as I know, most of us are just taking trades that we're learning here and trying to uh, find ways to better ourselves and learn, learn more and can take it with you in the future. So that's why, like, a lot of stuff that we do, I just try to learn it and add it to the skill set. Right, which is somewhat of a, a goal of the deconstruction program as well. Um, we believe that in learning how to take houses apart, like trying to figure out the proper way to take down um, a range hood or other electronic devices or take down doors or disassemble windows, um, the BABW crew can get a hands-on feel for what it takes to install them as well. Um, essentially, the deconstruction is our opportunity to go into an, an abandoned house that will be demolished and uh, it doesn't really matter if we break much along the way while we learn how to take things out, but we learn how the houses were built and how we could ultimately put that stuff back together later. It's almost like a little incubator. I like, yeah, no, that's fascinating. Yeah, because I've been very curious about them. Quite honestly, something that I've heard, not even just around the construction industry, but others, even manufacturing, apparently there's a lot of and uh, I think the, the, what I heard is that there are like about 20,000 jobs in, in Mahoney and Trumbull County, but just not e enough people to fill them. So, so with the construction one, I was very par particularly, I, w I wonder, uh, you know, so I, I'm going to put a pin on the second question, which is what people are going to do in the future. But we'll go back to it because I'm very fa uh, interested in that question. But uh, as part of... Um, uh, so what do you think uh, could change to to entice young people, like you were saying, either to understand that the work is hard, but it's fulfilling, or that it's worthwhile, that there's probably a good, I would imagine because it's construction, I'm imagining there, there's a pretty good living to be made, uh, and all that kind of thing, uh, is, uh, or is that, or, or is it not uh, that appealing of a job? <laughs> Um, I, I think there are more things that we could do as a community to try to bring people in and encourage them to um, do more skilled construction positions. Um, there is a there's a Newcastle School of Trades, which is just east of Youngstown. Um, I believe there are a few other business colleges, technical colleges, but I, I don't know that there is much of a Mahoning Valley Central um, trade program. Um, the Trumbull Career and Technical Center, which is uh, just outside of city limits, um, does or did previously have a construction trades program or a few different programs that focused around heavy equipment and construction. Um, but we, we have worked with them in the past to do a few renovation projects, but there is absolutely more that we could be doing to try to establish that link and get m more people involved with it. So um, I, I don't know what our actual construction trades program should look like, or if we were to develop one. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's, maybe that's an opportunity here. Maybe that is something that could be established, uh, a local, more local trade school that focuses on um, our regional activities. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, do you have any thoughts on no, not too much more what he's saying. I mean, because it just it just appears that you would just need people to understand that there's a need for the job and that the only way these jobs are going to get filled is if people are out applying, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just, well, just what it is. You need more help. You need more input from the people in the area, the people that live there to make the change. Uh, so now let's go back to then the second question about uh, what do you think, uh, how have you seen as people come in to build a better war team? Can you share some stories about people that may have changed, uh, like some changes you have seen 
or some goals or interest for the future that may have come up, that kind of thing? Yeah, I've seen like, uh, like even with myself, like just uh, learning new things and understanding the process of like teamwork, I could say, because like a lot of jobs like fast food and stuff, you kind of have a team, but some of the jobs are more or less on one person. Like we have jobs that particularly need two guys. Like you have to have someone help you carry something or if you're changing doorknobs and different things or just inspecting homes and uh, things like that. Like I've, I've definitely learned uh, what t true teamwork is from this job here. Damn. Johnny is in the room with Gary there. Um, he would probably be a good one to talk to. So um, last year, Johnny uh, purchased a house from the land bank and went and did wow. doing most of the labor himself. So um, he might be a Yeah, and it, it came out great. I, I haven't seen it in person, but I've seen photos and it really came out nice. So, um, I mean, if anybody lives the work, it would be, you know, he, he shows it. Thank you. So if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of your story and, and where what, what working with Build Up Better Warren has meant and what goals you have now for the future. Um, so yeah, so like uh, Landon was saying that um, I just started last year. Uh, I came from uh, working like like uh, Gary had just said, working like uh, at an O'Reilly Auto Parts, you know, so easier jobs like that. Um, I did dabble in uh, a lot of construction jobs when I was younger and a lot of, uh, um, you know, just general labor and stuff like that. So I had the knowledge to, um, for, you know, reconstruction and, and um, renovation. So uh, coming here, uh, I noticed what TMP does that, you know, they try to get people in homes, you know, and try to, you know, better the community and, and fix up, you know, some of these houses that are starting to decay and stuff. So um, uh, I had just recently uh, had a son, th uh, son. So we, I asked, I was interested in, you know, what, you know, what I have to do to go about getting one of our, you know, house off of the land bank. And um, it was actually generally really easy. And I'm a first time homeowner now. Uh, we, me and my fiance, we bought the house and I actually, um, lucked out and had my uncle and father-in-law that anything that I didn't know what, you know, how to do, um, they were, a, they were able to help me and certified in, um, those, uh, categories and stuff too. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was actually a, a lifesaver, a godsend finding this job, you know, it got me my first house and everything like that. And, and it's actually really beautiful for actually really, really, uh, really affordable <laughs> prices. Congratulations on all, all of it, on your child, on the house, and everything. Thank you. Uh, so, so, yeah, thank you. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, have there any been any alumni that have left the program and have started a business of their own or anything like that? Um, that I'm not sure of. Um, uh, yeah, to, like, to start the business on... on uh, yeah. Not yet. I don't, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. But that uh, definitely the goal. Um, hopefully, yeah, Johnny and the rest of the crew will, will be able to take the skills that they've learned here, um, especially around housing renovation and vacant land maintenance, and um, maybe launch some kind of uh, either real estate development business or something related. There's a, there's definitely the opportunity here. Um, there's a lot of affordable real estate that could be renovated and um, turn into a business, but uh, to date, I don't believe any BABW alumni have actually left and started their own business. Okay, great. Um, so I don't know if you guys mind then me asking you a little bit more kind of uh, a broader question. Uh, I, one of the things that I hear a lot in the area is questions about how to provide opportunities for young people so that they want to stay in the community. And just generally, it doesn't even have to be 100% about BABW, but uh, uh, what, if you had thoughts about that, uh, what are young people seeing in Warren as opportunities for staying? And, and the sons, for example, uh, Johnny, your, your experience being able to get a house, being able to get a job, being able to start a family is one that, that uh, uh, the, the area has accommodated and has done a lot. And I'm, I'm wondering if you guys have thoughts about that, what, what is needed? to keep young people in uh, Warren, Lordstown, Youngstown? Um, I would definitely say, uh, you know, more job opportunity. Um, I, I would see like there is some, 
um, out here, but there's, you know, typically not very much. Um, most of the job opportunity is kind of, you know, like a you know, minimum wage or something like that, something that, you know, people aren't really interested in because it's, you know, kind of hard to uh, survive off of minimum wage. Um, so um, I would say, yeah, job opportunities more, you know, of a, of a more of a trade job rather than, you know, just, you know, like the regular old, you know, fast food, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary or Landon, you guys have? Um, so I, I think something that we're realizing more as time goes on is uh, the creation of affordable homeownership opportunities as well. Um, in uh, Warren, Youngstown, and similar um, Rust Belt or deindustrialized cities, the real estate values are relatively low, which um, can lend pretty well to the creation of affordable homeownership opportunities. Um, you know, people will spend two, three, five hundred thousand dollars buying a house in a bigger city that they could buy here for forty, fifty thousand dollars. So um, we have had some luck in our renovation. Um, our turnaround time is generally not very long when we put a, a move in ready house on the market. Um, so I, I, I think that is something uh, as we continue to create those opportunities that will continue to attract people. But I, I do think the economic development side is something that will continue to need developed. I, I think there's a lot of work still around here to uh, allow people to be able to afford those ownership opportunities. And Gary, if you don't mind, because I'm curious about your answer to this question, what? what... Uh, Gary actually went to the bathroom one second. Okay. Let me I'll give him a second. And then um, still in the room over there uh, would be Jake, who is our um, team lead for the VABW program. We haven't heard from him yet. Um, yeah, just, he Matt. just grabbed Gary real fast. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can go then to Jake. And Jake, you can, if you don't mind just introducing yourself, and I would love to hear a little bit of your story. Yeah, no, I just said uh, Jake went to find Matt, but we, or to find Gary, but we have Matt in here. <laughs> Matt? Yeah. There you go, buddy. Hi, Matt. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, do you, if you don't mind just sharing a little bit about your story, about the work you do with Build a Better Warren and, and kind of what brought you there and any, uh, if you want to share some thoughts about your future, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, I started uh, back in April of last year. Uh, Gary actually helped me get the job. Um, he described what they do every day, and it was things I've done throughout the throughout my life, like landscaping, construction, um, stuff like that. I've dabbled in it all of in the last ten years, so I was interested in get back into that kind of work. And so, uh, yeah, I I came onto the crew and I loved it. Um, every day is something different, like everybody said. You never know what's going to happen. Um, one day we could be cutting grass, next day we could be uh, tearing into a house, taking stuff out. And then another day we could be doing um, whatever, you know, trash removal, anything like that. So it's a little bit of everything. Um, a lot of it, like they said, it's outside. Um, and in the wintertime, we're inside doing a lot of interior work with the renovation, the clean outs. Um, the salvage stuff. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I love it. What skills have you learned that you didn't think you, you, you would learn or that you, you just didn't expect to learn? Um, I wouldn't say I, I learned much. I've definitely expanded on what I've known. Like I said, I dabbled in a little bit of everything. Probably the biggest thing I've learned is actually a, a lot of the land bank and TMPs are in all of this. Um, Landon has helped me out understanding a lot of what the land bank does and how the process gets made and everything like that. So that's what I've, I've learned a lot of um, when it comes to like the renovation, the construction and stuff like that. I've definitely expanded my knowledge from this trial and error with a lot of things. Me and Johnny did a lot of interior work on our own and we have 
feeding off each other. We definitely taught each other a lot and we expanded. Um, <clears throat> same with the rest of the crews. We, they've all kind of, uh, we all kind of feed off each other. Everybody's knowledge, everybody chips in. And a lot of trial and error because none of us know exactly what we're doing, but we all have a little bit of idea of what we're doing. So, but yeah, a lot of like the, I would say the, the office work is what I've learned. So, and then, uh, lot of land and so. Um, so Matt and Johnny, um, this is interesting. Um, they are often the two that are first to see a house when it comes into the land bank. Um, so whenever a new property comes in, generally through tax foreclosure or donation, um, we don't know the condition of the house until one of us goes out and checks it out. Um, so Matt and Johnny will go out, um, they roll in a pair just in case there's any safety concerns. Um, they will get into the property, um, secure it, board it up while they are there, and then they'll get photographs and put together a, a rough estimate of what they believe needs done to bring the house back up to a, a move and ready quality or to bring it back up to code. So they'll put together um, a loose work plan and some rough price estimates, um, which is something I believe could be a, a career in itself down the road, um, either construction cost estimators, um, if either of them were interested in going into building in inspection or electrical inspection or otherwise, it's uh, something they would have a degree of skills already in. So Matt and Johnny have uh, really spearheaded that and have done really well in doing so. Great. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Matt. Okay. Uh, maybe we, we can chat with Jake for a second and, and uh, same thing, if, if, if I see in the room. Yeah. I'll, I'll swing them over to you. Thank you. Uh, just same thing. Hi, Jake. Nice to meet you. What's going on? Hi. Uh, okay. If you want to just mind sharing uh, your story, how you came to build, build a better war and what you've learned and where you see uh, these skills taking you in the future. Uh, I actually started down here uh, back in 2015. I was cutting the grass and stuff uh, throughout the summers. Um, up until 2017 and then uh, I came back full time last year in February. So yeah, I've been uh, here on and off throughout a few different summers and just kind of grass and then uh, yeah, that's how I came to be on the, on the crew. And what has been, uh, been being part of this team, what has it meant for you, to you? Um, it's pretty much everything. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, it's pretty much like, I want to be able to expand on, you know, the, the renovation side and be able to kind of, you know, make something out of it. Like, uh, expand on it by, you know, maybe one day having my own business that I do that and, I would actually like to be able to get into real estate and have my own properties that I invest in and fix them up and rent out and or sell. You know, that's something that I'd be able to take from this job and put towards that. Well, great. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to get to know you. And yeah, thanks for sharing your your dreams and aspirations. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you the question that I've asked a couple other people. What do you think uh, young people are looking in the area to stay in, in, in Trumbull County? You asking me that? Yeah. What are you, okay, so what are, what are young people looking to stay in the... Yeah, in like what kind of opportunities, what kind of, uh, what, what would, um, it, it's a question that I've heard some people ask in the past, yeah. especially in Youngstown and other people and other places. Um, Based on what I've seen, a lot of people that are my age or younger, they they mainly go into some sort of trade or they go into something that's uh, labor intensive or they're working with their hands. If they're not doing that, then they're moving out of the area. That seems to be what what's mainly happening and why. I mean, it's probably also going hand in hand with why jobs aren't, or why big factories or big jobs aren't staying in the area and why they're moving out. I mean, we don't have, we don't have the young people that are going to be filling those jobs. They're, they're moving out and they're going places that 
are growing and their economy is getting bigger. But uh, as far as here, what people do for a living is mainly labor intensive or it's, uh, yeah, that's mainly it. Thanks. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. And, and Gary, I, if you don't mind me, I'll ask you the same question uh, as the question that I was kind of going around asking folks uh, about young people and the area. What, what kind of opportunities, what do you see that people are seeking and that would really help, uh, help them stay? Well, I'll tell you one thing, man. What I see people are pursuing is money. But like if people don't understand, there is a lot of money to be made in construction and things like that that could help. But honestly, I think it's the time consuming part. A lot of people like I hear a lot of people say nowadays time is short, so they don't really want to, you know, take the time. But if they would really figure it out that it's worth it, because like my dad was is a 65 year old guy. He's retired. He was always uh, explaining to me like the difference when he went to high school was all the trades and stuff were in school. Everything you could learn in school, and by the time you graduated, you can go get a good job somewhere. Versus now, everything is kind of out of high school. Like you get a basic education and you have to go to a trade school or <clears throat> get enrolled in college or things like that. So maybe it's just people not necessarily having the money to spend to go to school, maybe to attend to get the trade or just the fact of it, having the interest in it. People are trying to be more tech-based and the things like that versus working hard, using your hands and still being out and about. Well, well, this is great. I don't want to take tons of your time. If you don't mind, I'll ask you, but I'll, I'll kind of begin to wrap up the conversation by asking you, what do you think is next for Build a Better Warren? Where are you guys, uh, where are you guys thinking of taking it? What kind of new skills? What kind of new projects? Uh, if, if, you had, uh, if, if you had a genie to ask some wishes for, for Build a Better Warren, what would it look like? What would it be? Well, all right, before the genie wish part, uh, I, I really see uh, BABW, Trauma Neighborhood Partnership, the whole thing being around for a while because as time goes on and uh, things happen to people and houses come up with the tax problems and things like that, all, there's always going to be a need for an organization like uh, BABW and TNP. Uh, as far as, you know, as long as we, we have funding and things like that, I don't see why anything would ever be an issue for us because as big as Trauma County is, there's always uh, properties that need uh, taken care of or like a house or something. So, I mean, I, I couldn't see anything, you know, knock on wood happening that would cause a uh, BABW or TNP to not be. Oh, oh no, that's not what I meant. I meant if you guys could add more people. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> what, 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 how would you like to, uh, what, what would, where would you love to take it? If, if like, uh, if, yeah, that kind of thing. Just. Okay. I would like to see, because just because we're BABW, I mean, a lot of people probably think we're just solely here and warm, but I mean, I think we could eventually get it to where neighboring communities and areas all like kind of go one and one and kind of take on what someone else is doing and maybe establish that somewhere else. So maybe we could see more TMPs, but in other neighborhoods, whatever that county is called, and maybe it can start a, I'm not going to say a trend, but maybe something that people can find a need for and see, you know. Nice. I like that. You, you want to branch out kind of franchise in that way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. <laughs> nice. And what about you, Landon? Where, where would you love to take the, the, this group that you've been leading and that has been kind of, uh, yeah, doing so much interesting good work? Um, so I, I, I really do think the housing renovation is going to be something that we grow into. Um, we have any, generally anywhere from 30 to uh, really 55 um, residential and grouped uh, single or uh, uh, two family houses available for sale from the land bank at any point in time. Um, I, I really think that turning these into move in ready housing um, or move in ready houses will be something that uh, could both keep us continually funded even when um, current grant programs. Uh, are no longer. Um, I think it's something that can keep us funded and I, I think it's something that will continue to improve quality of life in the area. Um, so I, I do hope that we can continue to grow our team and bring in some more skilled trade workers. Um, this is something that uh, the Youngstown Neighborhood Development Corporation has seemed to do really well. Uh, they take in a lot more of the construction tasks on their own. Um, generally, when we do a house renovation, we will contract out uh, the skilled labor portions of it, uh, so the mechanicals, um, plumbing, electricity, HVAC, and we'll take on a lot of the finished carpentry ourselves. But um, 
ideally in time, we'll be able to uh, increase the amount of, uh, increase our output and decrease our cost in doing so. And if we can continue to be successful in renovating the houses and doing so um, financial, uh, making ourselves financially stable in doing so, I think we can increase our team and hopefully bring on um, people who have experience in plumbing and electrical and HVAC. So I, I think growing into the renovation field is going to be the next big focus for BABW. And uh, I know, also training our crew more so to get ready to move off of BABW and move that into their, move into their own fields. Uh, so we do, um, we do send the BABW members to trainings. Um, they have, uh, I, I believe each of them, but Ethan, the newest, have completed financial literacy counseling uh, with the Youngstown Neighborhood Development Corporation. Um, everybody but Ethan has taken racial equity and inclusion courses. Um, we've done some stormwater runoff mitigation courses, but uh, introducing new trainings and uh, more on the job training, I think, will be the next big focus and trying to work more towards the renovation. So, Wow, really great. You don't get that kind of training in many other places. So, yeah. well, you know, I want to thank you guys for meeting up with me. This is short, and I'm, but I'm going to do is I'm going to do some write-ups and then I'll probably follow up with some questions. If I need to, maybe we can organize another smaller or however you guys want to. But this is great as an, intro, as a, as an introduction. Thank you so much to Jake, to Matt, to Johnny for sharing their stories. For you, Gary, it's a pleasure. It's a real, it's really nice to meet you guys. Uh, uh, one question I have for you is whether um, you have some photographs of you guys working maybe or and or uh, of uh, some of the outcomes of your work, some renovations, etc. Mm -hmm. I would love to include some of that. Uh, and then uh, the last question I have is if you have anything else you want to share with me, either Gary or Landon. Mm -hmm. okay. I, uh, I, I don't believe so, not off the top of my head, but I, I would like to continue discussing um, with you kind of some of the things that have worked in Cleveland uh, that we may not necessarily have tried here, um, either community or economic development wise, and um, what, if there are things that you think we should do, Julian, um, and Warren that aren't already happening, I, I would definitely like to discuss, you know, what, what works in Cleveland and what could work here. Well, you know, sadly, since I've been here only for so sure, I'm not 100% sure I can claim to be a Cleveland expert. Yeah. I can uh, I can share with you that uh, I am beginning to work with more folks. And one of the things I'm most interested in, and you, you, you've heard me talk about this, I think, is this idea of employee ownership. Uh, teaching people and, and working with people to also understand how to create cooperatives and cooperatives that both for work and collective ownership doesn't mean that there's no 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 leadership, etc. But also co-ops for housing and etc. I know Warren, for example, your uh, housing market is uh, inexpensive enough that maybe some of these things may not come up. But I have seen communities use these processes, and especially groups like as as interesting as uh, progressive as yours, uh, to begin to have a broader application of ideas is so that you can so that for example a concept that we're beginning to bat around there's a really interesting guy here Mordecai uh, uh, I think Cargill is his last name uh, mm -hmm. he and I and a project called Cleveland owns we've been talking about concepts around uh, community uh, wealth building and community ownership so I think different aspects of so those are some of the things that I could like share with you in the future. Also, I, as part of the larger project that I'm working on with YSU, I am doing tons of research into uh, things like uh, construction uh, incubators, uh, uh, construction lending libraries uh, of, of different materials. And one of the things, and, and, I, and I, I share, and I don't think you got to see land on some of this. I know you were there for the research review, but you didn't get to see the final. But for example, one of the students had a uh, really interesting, you remember the, the I Know a Guy guy? <laughs> yep, 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 the gig economy, right? Yeah, the gig economy guy. He ended up like uh, uh, doing a really interesting proposal for uh, informal economy incubators. Oh, and, wow. And that I've been talking to people and even people at different levels are really interested in thinking about this. 
how to uh, how to yeah yeah right right I uh, I read the numbers again to see how many people have either side jobs or um, you know have to have their own small businesses like that people who do cleaning or auto mechanic work or otherwise I uh, I do have to read more up on it but uh, I I know we've we've touched a little bit on um, the brain drain and brain gain um, idea that people uh, from here are. Uh, getting educated and getting skilled and then leaving um, and there's not necessarily many uh, there, there's not as much opportunity here or there's a perception that there's not as other places and I, I I don't know that I necessarily know the answer to what what is it that we need here to keep our younger trained people um, I, I don't know what the answer is like what will what will stop the brain drain uh, definitely something we should continue to discuss yeah uh, I, I, honestly yeah. there's some money around even to answer some of those questions the EDA and other people are willing to put some money behind some answers uh, or some some tryouts because there's you know solving issues like this are uh, Gary you you were uh, you want to say something around the com around community wealth building and all these other issues I just because I saw you kind of animated and I was wondering if you wanted to oh uh, you know no I was just uh I heard a conversation going on. I apologize. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. No worries. I just wanted to see if, if you wanted to you, chime in on that. Well, I uh, actually learn more about that. Yeah. So anyway, I, I really appreciate all of you uh, taking the time to chat with me today. I, I enjoyed learning about you guys and about the work you do. Uh, I'm I count me as a fan. <laughs> So I'll, uh, as I uh, do this, I'll, if I have any questions, I'll reach back out. So Thanks. please send me any images you have, any official kind of, uh, I know you, it's in your website, uh, but if you have like a PDF or something that describes some more of the project, like if there's anything that you want me to have, please do. And, uh, and as well, if you would, wouldn't mind sending me everyone's uh, last names, because I got everyone's first names, but not everyone's okay. last names. <laughs> no problem. But I can give everyone the, their due credit. All right. Thank you very much for uh, letting us talk to you and uh, tell you about the program. And, um, definitely a, a partnership we should continue to expand. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Bye. <coughs> it is still on. <laughs>